You know, the way that black people use the N-word today is just proof that when slaves ran away, they got hungry and ran right back to Mouse's plantation. Come on, Lee. Boy, did you run away from this plantation? Mouse said, yes, I did. But I just got hungry and ran right back here to the plantation because I just know that old God Theo was going to be making fried chicken tonight. Black people will call you for money. They will call in sick for work. And they will call you the N-word. It's a big difference between when a rich black person calls you the N-word and when a poor black person calls you the N-word. You see, when a rich black person calls you the N-word, they really, really mean that sick. I was going to date this girl that had a master's degree until she told me that she learned from Tupac that the N-word was a negative thing. And we've taken a negative thing and now we own it. Like that's something big. That's like the Johnny Green Giant coming into your neighborhood and taking a good old fashioned diarrhea shit right in your neighborhood and everybody's running up and down Martin Luther King Boulevard talking about some, we finally own something, we finally own something. And the little guy in the back trying to stay incognito is too scared to say, who wants to own this shit? People that use the N word, is like the stuff that collects at the bottom of an outhouse. You ever seen what's at the bottom of an outhouse? It's stuff at the bottom of an outhouse that eats and lives off of your shit. Can you imagine putting your booty on top of that? I'm talking about your naked, exposed, bare booty on top of that. The people that use the N-word are like that stuff. Black people use the N-word so much that they offended the Ku Klux Klan and made them feel useless. So they became Jehovah's Witnesses or started picking on the Mexicans. The Ku Klux Klan now has a Mother Teresa rating, and five stars on Google. I was in Mississippi, and a Confederate flag flying, truck driving, white boy pulled up beside me and said, you lazy, black, shiftless N-word, what are you doing down here? Then he drove off. I cried, chased him down, and I bought him lunch. Cause it ain't every day you gonna hear the N-word being used the right way. I even asked him, what's your mama name? I'm gonna buy her a gift too. For the people that use the N-word obsessively, it's like a disease. And I wanted to find out if there was a cure for this disease. So I pulled out the big guns. I went to talk to my grandma. Not only is she very wise, but she's one of those real OG grandmas. The kind that can do stuff like diagnose your farts. Grandma would be like, First of all, you need to be ashamed of yourself smelling like that. You need to drink more water and eat your vegetables. I knew you ate my last piece of sweet potato pie and drank my Coca-Cola. So I went to visit my grandmama and I asked her. I said, Grandmama, is there a cure for the people that are addicted to using the N-word? She said, baby, yes, there is. So when I heard that, I crossed over, my nose flared, and I got real curious. And I said, shut your mouth, Grandma. Ain't no cure for that. My grandmama said, the cure lies within a parasite, a louse called a gender louse. My grandmama said, the gender louse is the only parasite known to me that does not kill the host. And it's only found in the outhouses of Pulaski, Tennessee, which is the birthplace of the Ku Klux Klan. The ginger louse latches onto you like a leech and he bites you and his venom pairs with human flesh and all hell breaks loose from there. From there, you don't know whether you're a man, woman, boy, or girl, what bathroom to use, or what sports to play. But once the ginger louse is ripped off and removed, one of the side effects is you don't use the N-word anymore. The problem is that gender louse only latches on to your genitals. Please subscribe at the sound of the tone.